Hi, my name is Aloy, and this is a video reply to Condor King's TTRPG Thoughts Episode 18 video on the subject of immersion. Uh, in the interest of brevity, I took some notes because I am very long-winded, and hopefully this will help me stay on track. So I disagree with some of the things you said in that video, and I would like to offer a different viewpoint and perhaps get you to reconsider or reframe your position. Uh, now, hopefully I'm not strawmanning your argument. I did listen to the video twice, and hopefully I understood what you were trying to convey, but in case I have misunderstood, then please uh, help me understand your position here. Uh, so, uh, the video deals specifically with immersion and how sensitive you as a player are to being thrown out of the immersion. And so, Condor, uh, you make the point that uh, entering immersion is easy and that it's up to you as the player to come with an open mind and a willingness to immerse yourself in the experience. And I, I agree with that, right? I, I, I agree that it's easy to immerse. I agree that a large part of the process is really up to the player to bring the right attitude, to pay attention, to be present in the game, right, and, and listen to the, to the game master and to the other players at the table, right. So the, the part that I disagree with is, is where you call out sensitivity to certain words and that those things can bring you out of the game and that it's really your fault as a player for being too sensitive to these words and so by implication it's up to you to correct that right the game is not the problem uh, the game is not the words that are throwing you out the, the problem is you right and so by by implication it's it's you who has to fix it right you need to stop being so sensitive to the words that are throwing you out of immersion and um, I, I think that, you know, there's, as we said, as I stipulate that there is indeed a component for the player uh, to be able to immerse in the game and that it's an easy process. But I also think that if the group as a whole values immersion, because some people just don't value immersion at all, but if you do, then you should recognize the fact that everyone has to contribute to facilitate immersion for yourself and everyone else in the group, right? And this process of everybody cooperating enhances your game overall. Um, as to, you know, words throwing me out of immersion, well, this has happened to me both as a player directly, right? And it has happened to one of my players when I have been GMing. And so I would offer uh, some of the examples. Uh, the example uh, with me as a player came in a game of uh, Star Trek Adventures. Um, and, you know, I'm familiar with Star Trek. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more than a casual viewer, right? But I'm not a real Trekkie, right? Like I don't have the photographic memory for details and the problems that I had when I played it had nothing to do with the precise level of detail that, you know, some Trekkies may need to maintain immersion. I'm just a casual guy. As long as you keep the broad strokes, I'm, I'm immersed, I'm happy. And so, you know, again, starting from the you know, I, from the point where it's it's up to me, I showed up to the game with the right attitude, having, you know, familiarized myself with the setting and and willing to enter immersion, right? Uh, so and, and paying attention and everything. I was doing my part as a player. But then uh, the, the GM during the play, I, I say something like, I want to report uh, my findings of my investigation to the... Uh, command crew of the ship, right? So we gather in the uh, in the in the conference room for me to to speak to them, and then uh, game master goes, yeah, well, you know, you stand there and you give your PowerPoint presentation, and it's a joke, right? It's a PowerPoint presentation. So the first time you hear that, it's funny, it's a joke, it's great. But that's not the only time he does it, right? He does it again, you know, that at some point he, you know, he, you say this, the captain says that, and then he says, and then you continue with a PowerPoint presentation. So now 
it's it's a PowerPoint presentation, right? It's a contemporary thing in the wrong setting. And then, you know, a little bit later on in the, in the, in the game, I say, well, I go to the computer because I need to research uh, the planet that we're going to. And then he says, yeah, yeah, okay, so, you know, roll for it. And then, okay, you succeed. So, you know, you boop, boop at the computer until you get uh, the results that you want. And, you know, boop, boop at the computer, right? So, again, it's this word. Maybe it's supposed to be funny. But it's delivered deadpan, and it's on the heels of, you know, the PowerPoint presentation. And so it's this type of disconnect that I feel, you know, the, the, the I, I need to take your game seriously, right? So it's up to you as a GM to present me with a serious-looking reality, right? If we're just going to make jokes, then it's a informal game, right? I see no need to provide that much attention because it's just jokes, right? Um, and that's the problem where I, where I start losing immersion. I, I, I am no longer standing on the bridge of the ship, right? Uh, trying to interface with a computer, futuristic-looking thing from what I've seen on TV and the movies, right? Now it's I'm boop booping at the computer for my PowerPoint presentation. Right. And so it's a combination of words, right? This thing that happens over and over. And you are doing your best effort to maintain this image, this 3D virtual simulation in your mind as you describe it. Uh, but these words are fighting against you, right? You know, if, if, if it's not just a GM. If another player says, well, I draw my gun. Well, it's Star Trek. You draw your phaser, right? If you draw your gun, I'm picturing like a Glock. 17 or something uh, uh, or you know uh, an assault rifle like an m16 right this is my rifle this is my gun no no it, this is your phaser pistol right it's a precise word you have to choose these words right or somebody says i pull out my uh ipad it's, it's not an ipad it's a data pad or i pull out my iphone it's your communicator words matter they are important now the same thing happened to one of my players ivan in our star wars game we're playing star wars and in star wars ffg you have different tiers of enemies you have the lowest tier is minion and they're very fragile right so you can kill a bunch real easy next up is rival which is harder to kill and the top level tier is nemesis which is really really difficult to kill now while we're doing the battle you know, I, as the GM, make the mistake of saying, you know, there's a group of minions uh, standing next to a, a, a control tower, and there's another group of minions standing uh, outside an armored vehicle, right? And so, or, or I think it was one group of minions, and then the other thing was uh, a guy, a, a rival. So I describe him, can't remember what it was, a sergeant, let's call it Stormtrooper Sergeant standing on the opposite side right and so you know he says well i draw my blaster rifle and i fire and so i ask you know are you firing at the stormtrooper or at the minions and this is an error in my part because yes the, the, there's a need to communicate the fact that the stormtrooper group is a minion meaning they are easier to take down than the stormtrooper sergeant who is a rival and it's tougher to uh, incapacitate so you have to make the in-game distinction so that the player is aware and can make a tactical choice but at the same time you are losing the fiction here uh, what I should have said is just say it once there's a group of minions here there's a sergeant there and then ask well are you firing at the sergeant or at the stormtroopers because it's quite difficult to maintain the image of a serious threat if you're thinking about minions, right? Because you know they are fragile in comparison with normal people, right? And, you know, if it goes really bad and you start thinking about it too hard, you might picture uh, Despicable Me minions, which is even worse, right? And that will break your immersion like that, right? And so that is an error that I saw myself doing as GM. And in both cases, when I was a player in Star Trek, at the end of the session, I said to the game master, you know, I'm having difficulty maintaining immersion in this game because of this thing, the boop boop, the PowerPoint, uh, you know, phasers, data pads, please use the correct terminology. And if you could do it and I could do it and the rest of my players can do it, I think the game will improve, right? 
uh, Ivan said it to us right at the end of the game. It's like, I'm having difficulty with this use of the word minions. Please don't call them minions. Call them stormtroopers. You know, that, that just tell me once that they're minions so I know who I'm shooting at. But after that, make them stormtroopers so I can feel the threat, so I can be physically there with them fighting. And so, uh, again, jokes are fine. Everybody can, can take a joke, right? But if you continue to use the wrong term, uh, particularly if you deliver it deadpan, right, not as part of the joke, then that does not help at all. Uh, if, as you say, RPGs are mind games, then the GM has to choose their words carefully because words are powerful and evocative, and it's it's the use of words that that allows the the the, the GM to play with your mind, right, with the players' minds. Um, so I think that it's everyone's responsibility, both the players and the GMs, to maintain a tone, and it's really not that hard to choose words right to make sure that you use the right term for the right setting uh, i don't think it's it's too big of an ask uh, for anyone else um and you know it, furthermore uh, I, I would argue that a good gm helps to initiate the process yes being immersed is easy particularly if you bring the right attitude but uh given the fact that as you say gms have a greater degree of power and authority than the rest of the players uh, and also the fact that the position of gm gives you the responsibility of framing the initial scene of any session it's you who starts the game it's not the player who starts the session right uh it's you to frame how that looks how that you know what we see what we hear what we feel uh what we smell all the senses right you set up the how the game starts every session even if it's con continuing uh something that you were doing well then you initiate the session by describing so we are you know at this chamber where we left off and this is what's happening you know what do you do or something along those lines right it's a, a good description can facilitate an immersion for everyone now when when uh, uh when we do it i have a friend who calls it uh, closing the magic circle right or drawing the magic circle and it's like this ritual that we go through when we start play right we ask everybody else we meet up uh on 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 zoom or whatever uh, meeting app we're using and everybody just says hi and starts making jokes as usual but at some point uh, the gm usually or somebody else just goes all right enough let's get started right and at, with those words everybody just goes really quiet and then the GM will say an initial description, right? And, you know, it is nightfall. And, uh, you know, as we descend through the trees, we see a train of horses being led by your character bearing a torch, right? Lighting the way as you make your way uh, through this forest towards the mansion of the man who has summoned you uh, on this night. And whatever, you know, you make a description. But it's a process, and it kickstarts immersion. So that's about it. I hope, you know, I hope this different point of view at least gets you to, uh, you know, think a little bit differently about the subject, and hopefully uh, we can talk more. Again, if I misunderstood what you were trying to say, then please... Uh, feel free to comment or correct me or, or help me understand what I'm getting wrong. Uh, so anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.